I have probably the world's number one Pokemon collection inside this case. Little figures? Cards, and they're all Charizards. <laughs> which is the number one Pokemon guy. Okay, hold, hold on one second here. Yes. Chum. Yeah? This guy's got Pokemon cards. Big. It's not Pokemon. It's Pokemon. Okay. I'm here to sell my Pokemon collection. I got into Pokemon collecting with my sons, and eventually they grew up and went to college, and I never did grow up. So I continued with Pokemon for the last 17 years. This is pretty cool, man. Absolutely. So, Rick, you don't know about Pokemon? It's like a game like eight-year-old kids play, right? Basically, each player has a deck of 60 cards, and you battle with your Pokemon by pulling cards out of your deck and getting enough energy points so that you can attack your other player. You can win by your opponent not having any Pokemon left. It's really popular. They have whole tournaments with where 1,000 people enter, and they have Pokemon battles. OK. I really don't understand why Pokemon is such a big deal, but if something like a Beanie Baby can become worth a lot of money, maybe these can too. I just need to know a lot more. They're pretty cool. Actually, some of them can be worth a lot of money. So these go for a lot of money? Yes. What's your most expensive one? Uh, the most expensive card is probably the Pristine 10 first edition base Charizard. The card itself is considered the crown jewel of the Pokemon world. And how much is that worth? In the range of 50 to 100,000. Whoa. And yeah. people pay that for these. Yeah, especially now with the new Pokemon craze. I know you heard of the new game out. The new Pokemon game everyone's playing on their phone. Pokemon Go. No. You just walk around until you find one, and then you sling Pokeballs on it. Maybe you need an Ultra Ball. OK. So how much do you want for these things? I'm looking for right in the area of $500,000. <sighs> do you mind if I have someone look at this? That's fine. I'll be right back. It's just it's baffling. Yeah, he doesn't know what to think right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Pokemon. It seems to me the one who's going to make the decision really doesn't know what he's looking at. I'm happy that the expert is coming in to educate the fella. He's going to know what these are selling for and the future collectible value of them. I'm sort of like in a baffled cloud here. Um, <laughs> what can I do for you guys today? He's got Pokemon cards and. Pokemon. OK, so Pokemon cards. So, and he uh, says they're worth a half a million dollars, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of cards here, Rick. So Pokemon started in Japan in 95. Probably about 2000 to 2002 is when it really took off. So that's why these first edition cards are really hard to find, because you still hadn't created like this large market for what it became. And Charizard's like one of the best characters in the game. He's also one of the most collectible characters in the entire Pokeverse. So. The, whoa, whoa, hold on. <laughs> the Pokeverse. The Pokeverse, the Pokemon world. Yes, sir. OK. Rated tens, I believe there's less than 50 PSA tens in existence. And by looking at this, there's 20% of the market sitting on your counter. I look at this collection and I just can't believe my eyes. There's pristine tens everywhere. Charizard being one of the top collectible pieces in Pokemon. I, this is a one of a kind collection. What do you think this stuff is worth? So this one here, there's only one of them in existence. There's no other graded a 10. Beckett grades so much harsher than PSA does when it comes to giving their 10 stamp. This card could go 30 to 40,000. Altogether, I'm estimating anywhere from 380 to 390,000 for this collection. Really? Obviously, this guy's a little upset over Steve's appraisal, but I'm absolutely blown away. The, these are really, really interesting. I mean, you actually have lots of value here. But my problem with these is if I go to sell them, I can't have any conversation about them because I know absolutely nothing. I don't even know what a Charizard does. Well, it depends on which one. OK, all right, chum, chum. I, I... Rick, throw them out of offer. I'm not going to make an offer. It's just, it's out of my skill set completely, 100%. I'm not going to be able to sell something I don't understand whatsoever. So I'll make him an offer. Not with my money. I don't have the knowledge or expertise to sell these things. Thanks for bringing it in. Thank you. $380,000 worth of Charizard. I still don't know the difference between a Pokemon and a Charizard. Actually, Charizard is a Pokemon. Yeah. Say hello to my little friends. Holy crap. 
I've never seen so many. What do we got here? That's what you got to get these. Smurfs, huh? Yeah, pure blue gold. How many Smurfs do you have in here? I have almost a 1,000 Smurfs here. Holy Smurf. <laughs> Dude, I love Smurfs. Yeah, man, you got to go get up to the front door. Dude, but you're security, not Smurf watcher. Man. My favorite TV show was the Smurf, and it took me 15 years to collect them. I'm hoping to take $12,000. It's a life collection, but I have to move on. I can't, for the life of me, remember what the story was about. You know, they lived in a village. It was like a secret. Yeah, they lived in a secret village, and they built uh, bridges, they cook, and their leader is Papa Smurf. Who was always trying to get the Smurfs, though? Uh, Gargamel and his evil cat, Ezreal. Gargamel and Ezreal, all right, yeah. yeah. I mean, I watched Smurf cartoons, too, when I was a kid, but this seems a little obsessive, man. <laughs> well, you gotta have them all. They have firemen, they have bodybuilders, they have skateboards, bicycles, motorcycles, uh, every sports, boxing, they have them all. All right, well, that's good to know. Smurfs were huge when I was a kid, and now they're making a comeback with new movies and more toys. With all the different characters and storylines, I mean, they're the perfect things for toy collectors. I mean, look at this guy. He's obsessed. So what exactly do you have here? Well, I got all the first edition of the regular Smurf. I got, like, around 700 of these figurines. I had some promotional Smurf. I got even the Benjamin Franklin Smurf, Bodybuilder Smurf. I got everything here. What about the boxes in the back? What other kind of stuff do you have? I got the houses of the Smurf village. I got the windmill. I got the sports stadium. You got a lot of Smurfs. It's smurfed out, man. <laughs> so what do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. You just done with the Smurfs, or? Yeah, I've moved to a smaller house. I just don't have the time and space to keep collecting them. How much are you looking to get? I want $12,000. All right. Um, I'll give you two grand for all of it. Oh, come on, man. The amount of time and labor this stuff takes to actually sit there and sell, you're better off selling it yourself. No, I think Gargamel would pay me more than that, <laughs> man. <laughs> You know, that's what I'm willing to do, man. I'll tell you what, I'll lower it to 4,000. 4,000? Yeah. You got 2,500 bucks. I'm not gonna pay anymore. What about 3,000? 2,500 bucks. 2,800. 2,500. Not a little bit more, not even Not even a one cent more. <laughs> this is a life collection, man. It's your life collecting this stuff, not mine, man. I'm trying to buy it for 2,500 bucks. I'll Deal? take it. All right, cool. Uh, let's go inside and do some paperwork. Chum, you want to start packing Smurfs? Yeah. I think they got Lucky Smurf on their side because they got a really good deal. Holy mother of Transformers. This is like the Transformer mecca. <laughs> I acquired this Transformer collection over the years. I sacrificed eating lunch at school and used my lunch money that my mother gave me to buy Transformers from the store. I have to part with the Transformer collection today because I have to make room for our newborn baby. My Transformers take up the entire room and uh, both the baby and the Transformers can't be in it. All right, so tell me all about these. Um, they came out in 1984 and been accumulating them up till now. All different types here. We have your first generation Optimus Prime. You've got uh, Fortress Maximus over there. It's about two foot tall. Uh, one of the most expensive Transformers you could have bought. Devastator. It's got all the Dinobots. Soundwave Blaster. Um, I could go on and on. Pretty sick. Yeah. One of the cool things about Transformers is they've been around for a pretty long time and they're still relevant. If Hollywood is still making movies about them, that means they still bring in money. It also means that the value of the original Transformers is going up, up, up. So what do you want to do with these? Well, I, I have to part with them now. Uh, baby's on the way, so we need the room. What do you want for them? Well, I was hoping to uh, get about 20 grand for them. 20 grand? Yeah. That's a lot of money for Decepticons. I think 20 grand's a fair deal. If you broke this collection up and pieced it out, you can make a lot of money. Specifically, that tall one back there sells for a grand easy with the box, and I have the box. 
All right, if what you're saying is true, uh, I love to make money, so let me get someone over here and we'll take a look at these things and maybe there's some money to be made. All right, excellent. All right, thanks a lot, man. Hey, man, no problem. I think these Transformers could be a good buy, but 20 grand is a lot of money. I have to get a hold of someone who knows about these things. Welcome to the Mecca of Transformers. Oh, wow, oh my gosh. This is amazing. So Johnny, this is why I called you. What do you think? I love this collection. I'm glad you brought me here. My name is Johnny Jimenez. I'm the owner of the Toy Shack of Las Vegas. I've always had a passion for toys ever since I was a little kid. And my collection's been growing ever since. You know, this is one of the best collections, the biggest collections I've seen. There's a lot of money here in this room. So why do people collect so many of these things? These were by far the coolest toys ever made in the 80s. I mean, these were two toys in one, and they were quality. Most of these were die cast. People want their old toys back that their mom threw out. So they're going back and, and paying top dollar to get their old toys back. I mean, it's just a mass collection. I mean, you just don't have one of each. I mean, you got four or five. So what do you think it's all worth? This has got the box that goes to Fortress Maximus. A collector would pay two to $300 just for that box. Without the Transformer? Without the Transformer, just for the cardboard, just like that. This collection here is worth about fifteen to $20,000. In order to get the $20,000 out of this collection, you're going to have to take the time to piece it out. That's a lot of labor. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for bringing me, Rick. OK. All right, so how many pieces are here total? Uh, a little over 1,000. My problem is, is I'm looking at $5,000 just in labor, and by the time I'm done and want to make a profit, you're not going to like my offer at all. But I can give you like five grand for this stuff. I can't do that. I can't part with this for $5,000. I'll come down, come down to 18. I, I can't do it. You know, I could give you $10,000 for this stuff. Well, I, I can't do that. I appreciate you coming down, though. Yeah, I Thanks appreciate it too, up. man. At least I learned something. Thanks for letting me see this collection. Oh, Next time I'm at a yard sale and I see one of those things, I know to buy it. All right. Well, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to come to a deal today, but, uh, you know, at least I got an expert opinion on it, and, um, you know, I'm happy. What we got here, son? Uh, kind of an interesting little collection. Prosthetic eyeballs. Whoa! You match up the color to your existing eye, and you just pop them in. That looks freaky. Yeah. Well, it's better than having a big hole in your head. Coming to the pawn shop today, try and sell my collection of 400 plus hand blown glass eyeballs. Hoping to get about 10 grand for them. Lease sell takes 2,500, so see what we can go from there. It's an interesting collection. How did you acquire it, son? From my dad, it was in the optic business. They're all hand blown glass, 1890s to 1939. I think they're real interesting for how old they are. I mean, having to have all the detail in them. I mean, you got the veins and everything in them. Back in the day, they didn't have no OSHA or no safety regulation. They had a lot of accidents. You use this instead of an eye patch. Nowadays, glass eyes are not even made out of glass. They're made out of plastic. In fact, they hadn't made them out of glass since around World War II. This looks like a doctor's set. You got different sizes and different colors to match the eye that you have in your head. Tell me what color's my eyes. I can't never see them. They're always closed. Oh, they're blue. This is definitely something you don't see every day. But who in the hell are you going to sell them to? Most people's going to find them creepy. So what are you trying to do with these, son? I'd like to sell them. How much are you trying to get out of them? Going buy some stuff I found online. They're all $25, $30 a piece individually. At 30 bucks a piece, you're talking about 12 grand here. I was thinking more like 100 bucks. This deal probably ain't going to happen. They're not that valuable. They made a lot of them, and they never wore out. So there's still a lot of them out there. They're just a little bit freaky. Freaky? This is Vegas. You get yeah, people well, who buy kind of stuff like this all the time. No, not really. We're going to pass, friend. I thank right. you for bringing them no in. No problem. Thank you very much. Turned out a little too freaky for them to have in their store, but I'll try and sell them off somewhere else. Someone's got to have a purpose for them. I've been trying to convince the guys that I can find them some killer deals. So I found something that could make Rick a whole bunch of money. 
Hey, what's up? You guys from the pawn shop? Yeah, how you doing? How you doing? This place is amazing. It looks like a temple to me. Well, it's the world's largest collection of Nikes. It's broken down into categories like running, basketball, different themes, and all the shoes are on display with toys and props that bring them to life. Can you show us around? Oh, I'd love to. You've got 40 years of Nike running, all in chronological order. Where Nike running ends, Nike basketball begins. So you've got five aisles of basketball. There's just so many damn shoes. <laughs> You'll never find another collection like this anywhere. What is that? That's the dunk corner. Holy sneakers. So what's so special about these, Chum? I mean, you got the What the Dunks, you got the Supreme Collection, you got the Huffs, you got the Diamond Tiffany Blues. Everything's here. What's your most expensive pair of Dunks here? This pair right here is worth about $5,000. Whoa. So what do you want to do with all these shoes? I want to sell them. How much do you want? A million dollars. A million dollars for shoes. You got to be kidding me. I'll give you 300 grand for it. No way. I'll, I'll come down to nine. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll go half a million bucks. I won't go anymore. I'll come down to eight. That's my rock bottom price. I'll tell you what, I'll go 550. I can't do it. It's too low. It was nice meeting you, man. Rick. It's nice meeting you, too. Rick. So, I really appreciate you letting me see everything, but come on, Chum, we got to go. It's not going to happen. You want to sell anything individually? Thanks for coming by. Nah. Thanks for showing me. Come on, Chum. You're really, really missing out. Rick, you know what? I still think it's worth a chance. It really sucks we didn't make that deal. Rick would have made some serious money, and I would have got my 2%. And having those shoes in the shop would be unbelievable. You have a lot of Dukes of Hazard stuff. Yeah. I thought you had, like, a few lunch boxes or something, dude. I had no idea. You got watches. You got action figures. You got Daisy's Jeep. You know, the, the lunch box. The TV trays are amazing. You've got shoestrings. That's one of the thing I like about the 70s and 80s, man. They would throw a TV show on anything in front of somebody. The Dukes of Hazard calculator. <laughs> I didn't two, even see that. Yeah, you're talking about two hillbillies that couldn't do basic math. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Stoops of Hazard got me growing up in the country, lots of dirt roads around. Just identified with that. Completely different than any other show out there. But time for me to move on and get a hobby that I actually use instead of look at. I mean, I know it's one of those shows where no one really can tell you who the two stars were, but everybody knows what General Lee is. You know, everybody knows what Daisy Dukes are. <laughs> so it's a whole TV series defined by a car and a pair of shorts. That's why I watched it. <laughs> it was a fun show, though. They were good guys, and the local sheriff and Boss Hawk were like the bad guys. And they destroyed a 69 Charger every single week. I think the reason Dukes of Hazard was such a big hit was it was fun. I mean, you had a fast car, you had uh, two guys running from the law, the cops aren't real honest, you had a pretty girl. Every red-blooded American boy remembers Daisy Duke. <laughs> I mean, you have a Dukes of Hazard just about everything here. Chum Lee keeps losing his hair. He's gonna look a lot like Boss Hogg in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> so, you obviously want to sell it, otherwise you wouldn't have called me, but uh, how much are you looking to get for this stuff, dude? Uh, why don't you just give me two grand, and maybe you'll make out really great on it. Because I like you, but I don't know if I like you $2,000 worth. Like <laughs> um, yeah, dude, uh, hell, I have no idea. L let us call somebody up and see what this is worth, dude. I don't know what the hell this is. You know, I, I, didn't I didn't realize you had this much stuff. It's an impressive collection here. Yeah. Call Johnny up, dude, if you don't mind. All right, hang out. I helped Corey when his bike ran out of gas. I pulled Rick's great big motor home out of the sand dunes with my Jeep, and they're gonna still call somebody in? I think they ought to just pay me. We got a whole hodgepodge of stuff here, man. Got all the classic Meagle figures. Got even the guitar, the TV trays. Watches, calculators, you even got the sunglasses and keychains. And what's exciting about this collection is most of it's in original packaging. The Dukes of Hazzard show was wildly popular in the 1980s. I mean, they had everything you could possibly imagine with the Dukes of Hazzard logo on it. They made over 190 million each year. They merchandised the hell out of the show. And these are awesome. I mean, you got most of 
the guys here. These are classic. I mean, the Mego line, and this is when they were had like the eight inch. This is what they were known for. And then later on, they went to these three and three quarters. What was cool about those is those fit into the cars. And what I'm excited about is if you have the Daisy's Jeep, this is an item you don't see very often. Typically, you know, the boys would always get General Lee. So the Daisy with the Jeep, of course, is something you don't see very often. That's a great item there. That alone is like two, three hundred bucks. On the board game here, I mean, we got the original cellophane on there. That's exactly the way you want to see it. OK, so the big question, what's all this stuff worth? Well, condition's everything, and overall, condition looks amazing. As a group, I would have to appraise this collection here probably in the $1,500 to $1,600 range. Breaker one, breaker one. I might be crazy, but I ain't dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Is sure not like 2000 Some of the items here, they're cool and nostalgic, but after the internet, the prices have come down. Some of them aren't as rare as you think. All right. Thanks, Johnny. Today, there's a big market for anything 80s related. It's a big hit show. A lot of people can relate to it, and a lot of people collect it. So how much are you paying to lowball me? <laughs> Did you get a cut on it, or <laughs> is it just a, an even hunger? <laughs> no, dude, he's, he's being honest. I mean, it's a... Uh... Remember, you gotta find, how many people out there collect Dukes of Hazard stuff? You know, it's, it's a tough, it's tough, yeah. dude. Um, give you a grand for it? A grand? Uh, you know, dude, I gotta resell this stuff. It's gonna be a long time. It, it takes up a lot of room. Yeah, no, I understand. 12? Can you do 12? It's Mark, come on. All right, I'll give you 1,200 bucks, man. All right. All right. Cool. All right, dude, box nice. it up and drop it off at the pawn shop. Huh? Yeah. You always have people come and get it. Usually I'm the <laughs> when it comes to negotiating, you know, the whole good cop, bad cop thing, but Mark's a buddy of ours, and I'm not going to grind him over 200 bucks. <laughs> really, man? <laughs> what do we have here? Yeah, this is my badass Cupid doll collection. Got to be the first man ever in the history of the world to say that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Came down to the pawn shop today to sell my Cupid doll collection. We have approximately 25 dolls. I want to sell them because we moved out here from LA about four months ago. And we're looking to make a little extra money. I'd like to get anywhere between $1,200 and $1,500. Probably the least I'd like to take is about 1000 bucks. All right, so where in the world did you get this? West collection, had to bring it in. Be honest with me, does your wife know you're selling these or not? Yeah, she does, absolutely, yeah. All right, man, so what made her start collecting these? Her mother uh, and her grandmother basically started collecting them back in the day. And um, we just started going to antique stores and finding little pieces here and there and kind of got carried away over 10 years, so. Uh, all right, um, yeah, I mean, they're pretty interesting. I mean, they were kind of all based off Cupid, uh, you know, Roman god of love. Uh, I don't think uh, the Romans quite pictured him quite like this. <laughs> uh, Probably not. That's, uh, doesn't really look very godlike there. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> What's your oldest one? The oldest one, from what I understand, uh, is this one here, which I believe is 1914, 1918. You know, I know that, you know, ones like this and anything that says Germany on it, I believe one of these has the word German on the back, because that's where they originated from, just makes them extremely valuable. Okay. Dolls just aren't my thing, but QP as a brand has a great history and I know a lot of people love them. So they might be worth picking up for the right price. What are you looking to do with them? Well, we're looking to sell them, you know, as a, as a group, you know? Because obviously I realize that some things are worth more than others. Uh, we're looking to get anywhere between 1200 and 1500 bucks. Okay. Um, well, let me tell you this, man. I've never been into dolls. I don't, I've never dealt with dolls, I, I, really. I don't blame uh, you. I'll tell you what, man, I've got a friend that old toys is all he deals with, so he'll know right. what this stuff's worth. I'd like to give you a price, but anything I say, I'd just be making up. Yeah, no so worries. Let me give him a call and get some more dolls down there. You can check out if you're into them or something like that. I'll be right back. All right, cool. You know, experts are always good because they'll probably know more about, you know, the QPs than I will. We've done a lot of research in the past, but uh, there are a few pieces that we don't know everything about, so I would like to find out a little bit more about them, too. How's it going, Corey? Doing good, dude. Earlier, a guy brought in a collection of QB dolls. Everyone knows I'm not a doll expert, so I called the only guy I know who is to come take a look. 
So, I mean, you got a good selection. You got a little bit from everywhere. You've been collecting these for a while? Yeah, yeah, the wife and I have been collecting them for about 10 years. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know anything about these. Not at all. Well, I mean, they've been around for over 100 years. Rose O'Neill, in the early 1900s, she was illustrating. And then 1909 was the first publication of the Cupid. And then she got a flood of letters of everybody demanding dolls. And then not too long after, they started producing these dolls in Germany. They were kind of based on Cupid, but he kind of caused trouble where these kind of saved everybody. Cupid dolls are collectible to an older generation. Um, they're very big in Japan, just to animate a look to them. But the stories of them was cool, because they were kind of like the Care Bears of the early 1900s. So is there a big market for these out there? Well, yes and no. A lot of people that grew up in this time or relate to these stories, a lot of those people aren't around nowadays. But there's a lot of people who still carry on the story of Rose O'Neill and what she did. If you don't mind, take a closer look. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, okay. no problem. Great. Looking for a few of the markings here. Let's see what we have. People nowadays have mastered reproducing these logos and stuff, so you gotta be really careful. Let me just look at these ones here. Did you repair that or was it, did it come like that? That one came like that. It came like that? Mm hmm. Okay, great. So, in all in all, Johnny, what do you think? Um, I wouldn't sell as a collection, I'd break them up individually. Most of these vinyl ones here, you're probably gonna get in the 40 dollar range, maybe $50 a piece. Right. I mean, you got some great pieces. You got some earlier ones here. You're probably looking at maybe the 300 to $500 a piece. But uh, overall, as a group, uh, you could easily pull anywhere from maybe 1700 $1,800, I would say. All right, my man, I appreciate you coming down. All right. All right, Thank man, you. thanks for Have a great one. Appreciate it. The value I put on the Cupid dolls was based on individual prices. A lot of the earlier collectors will not pick some of the vinyl ones up, but I don't think you have any problem moving them. They sell pretty fast. <sighs> so what do you take for them, man? I know you gotta make a little bit of money too. I mean, I'd, I'd like to get like 12. I mean, I think that's reasonable. My wife would be happy with that. How happy would she be with 800? Nah, we... Uh, uh, if we're somewhere like around 11, that would be good. I mean, it still gives you plenty of money to make on it. Let me give you a thousand, man. Yeah, selling all these individually, I just, it's gonna take me a year. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine someone's probably gonna wanna take all of them in one shot, but uh, there are some valuable ones. Um, yeah, I could do a thousand. That'd be fine. All right, cool, man. Cool. Thanks. Meet me over there and I'll write you up, right? Great. Thank you. Made a thousand bucks today. Pretty happy. Knew that there was some value there, so we're just glad that they're going to a good place. Hey, Bernie, how's it going? How are you, Rick? Doing good. There's a ton of people I do business with all around the country, but I never get to meet them in person. Can't wait to see this stuff. It's always over the phone or the internet or something like that. So now that I'm in LA, I'm going to go see Bernie the guy when it comes to all things Disney. Whoa. This is it, the Mouse House. That's all from the 1930s. This has got to be like the most impressive collection I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. I love Mickey Mouse. I've been collecting Mickey Mouse and Disney things since about 1968, before it was pop chic. I saw this stuff go from lowbrow to high art in a matter of decades. This is all pre-Disneyland. Oh, definitely pre-Disneyland. Disneyland was 1955, where the first merchandise was produced around 1929, 1930. Yeah, I, I think the first merchandise piece was someone ran into Walt Disney in a lobby and wanted to give him $300 so he could put Mickey Mouse on a notepad. That's exactly right. Mickey Mouse was wildly popular in the 1930s. But the stuff that was built wasn't built to last, and there's hardly any of it around today. Let me show you, this piece is not for sale, um, but this is a old King Cole store display pre-Donald. But the beauty of this thing is it moves. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that, Rick. Um, yeah, that is amazing. Now I'll show you something that I think might be the only example. That's Walt Disney's original business card from the Hyperion Studio in Hollywood. 
That is amazing. No email address. <laughs> the business card is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen, because I've never seen one before, but I doubt if anyone else has. You are looking to sell some stuff, right? Well, I've got a couple pieces that I could show you that I think you'd find rather interesting. Come here, let me show you. I have probably the largest accumulation of what they called Old King Cole store displays. And I have got three that I'm going to show to Rick that he's going to go back to Las Vegas with. You mark my words. It's a Mickey, Donald, and another Mickey. Amazing. They were made by a company called Old King Coal in Canton, Ohio. And they were never intended for the consumer market. These were commercial things that were either used as window displays, store displays, and then also in theaters. They'd use them if they had a Mickey Mouse cartoon or something. They were made of paper mache, the world's most delicate material. And there were very few made, and very few survived. I want these store displays. I'm a closet Disney freak, and this is stuff that will never come my way again. I need to have this. The great thing I love about this right here, we have the old Donald Duck with the giant long bill. Long bill Donald, that's right. They were crazier characters back then. Absolutely. So how much were you looking to get out of these? Well, I need 15,000 on the Donald. If you want the pair of them, they're pointing to each other, Rick, Make a nice marquee <laughs> somewhere for you. You're gonna pay me uh, 25,000 for the pair. And this one over here, you can have for 12,000. So if I took them all? 35,000, Rick. Did you go 30? You're gonna negotiate with me? <laughs> it's, it's in my blood, I can't help it. I mean, they're amazing, they really are, and uh, can we meet in the middle? That would be 32.50, wouldn't it? Yeah. Congratulations, you made yourself a hell of a buy. I'm absolutely giddy. These are probably one of the coolest things I've ever bought. This is gonna be one of those things that I hang in my shop that people for years will come down just to look at these. Let's go look at some other stuff. All right. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how you doing today? What do we got here? I got a pest collection I'm looking to unload today. You got any candy? No, these have no candy in them at all. These are all from the 1960s, 1970s. What good are candy dispensers without candy? Come on, man, you work with this guy. I'm coming to the pawn shop today to try to sell some of my uh, pest collection. I like Pez collecting because they're pretty cool. I mean, it's real Americana. You know, like baseball cards or Barbie dolls, G.I. Joe dolls. It's just fun collecting them. These are very, very collectible, and it's a great hobby. Seems like this is something that kids would be into collecting, man. Come on, man. Busts my balls all day long. I know it might look childish to you, but there's definitely money into it. I have Casper the Friendly Ghost in the original box from the 1960s. This uh, particular Pez here goes for like three to $400. I have the Mickey Mouse in the original box. It's a die cut. This piece here goes for about $350, $400. One of my coolest pieces I like is the original Batman. Very tough to find. You know, this goes for about $250, $300. We got Bozo, Tinkerbell, a Zorro. The 50 pieces that I'm bringing in today are uh, worth about $5,000. Such a big collector, man. Why are you looking to sell them? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of these are my doubles. OK. And I just want to unload them. OK. So I can make money on them and, uh, Buy more Pez, obviously. Buy more Pez, definitely. Okay. More rare ones. I'm definitely interested in these Pez dispensers. I mean, there's a huge community out there of people who collect these things online. My only problem is, is that there's so many people out there buying and selling these things already that I need to get them really cheap. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to sell them. What do we want for them? I'd like to grab 2500 for them. I'm going to grab it somewhere else. I'm going to offer you a grand, my friend, just because i got to resell them. You could put these on the internet individually and uh, definitely make your money back on these. Well, man, I'm not looking to break even at all. I put them on the internet, next thing you know, I'm competing with five other guys selling the same Pez. I understand that, but these three pieces alone are a Gino. Yeah. These three pieces alone. Give me 2000 man. 1000 bucks is what I can do. It's fine. All right, buddy. Get out of here, man. 
I can't believe one of them guys offered me $1,000 for that, them 50 pieces of Pez. That's an insult to the Pez community. I can't believe it. That's why they're chooches.